Um, so we're doing a very simple round here. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to create an app without a reversal. So if you've opened up your browser with the, um, uh, with the dictionary you just exported, you can close that. And uh, we're going to go into Dictionary App Builder now. And so we have the new app button or we have file new app. So I'm gonna do file new app just because. And the first thing it wants is your lexicon database. And it tells you in here that this can be in Lyft or XHTML format. Uh, we'll probably discuss what Lyft is later, but uh, you're doing an XHTML format because you're pulling data from Flex and it's a lot more powerful in that way. Um, and it says the XHTML files can be exported from Fieldworks Language Explorer. And then it says in Flex, select file export, then choose configure dictionary. So we just did that, great. So I'm going to browse, file, new app. I'm going to hit browse and I'm going to go to wherever I just, wherever I just exported my XHTML document. So I put it in documents, resembly export. So I'm going to go up there, documents, resembly export, resembly.xhtml, and click open. So I'm going to stop there, and uh, so that everyone can, I can make sure that everyone has found their XHTML file. All right, next. So it does. It's going to scan through your file, and it's going to get some statistics. And so the first thing is that this XHTML was updated uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, there are 254 entries in my example, uh, and the lexicon languages, lexicon language is uh, actually a SIMBI. That's that was what this originally came from, and the gloss languages are English, and it's actually listed phonetic. Um, that's okay. So you should see. If you've configured your dictionary correctly, you should see the three letter code for the language that you're studying in here. And you will see English and or French in the gloss languages. You may see something else, that's okay. So we're gonna click next again. And it's asking about reversals. Um, and reversals, if, you've, if you have a, uh, an assembly English dictionary, the reversal would be the English French part of the dictionary. Uh, for right now, we're going to skip that in this app. Uh, when we come back through a second time, probably after the pause, um, then uh, we will actually add a reversal as well. So we're just gonna skip that and I'm gonna click next. Now you get to title your, um, your dictionary. This is internal for you. It actually doesn't matter, but you can configure this to your liking. There's a lot of, lot of text here down in the bottom. So it recommends to use a, shortish, a short name uh, because it's creating a folder. Um, it says use uh, mixed case, so capital, capital letter at the beginning of each word. And it says, don't use any special characters. Um, and that is important. Uh, don't use any special characters in this name. This name is internal for you and it will actually name a folder that. And many times development tools don't like folders that have special characters in them. Sometimes development tools don't like folders that have spaces in them. Spaces are okay here uh, in Windows, that's fine but don't use accented characters, things like, or special characters in this. This is internal, this is not gonna show up in your dictionary. So, next. All right. So it's asking for now the package name. Uh, and it gives you a recommendation on how to do that. So it says, start the, start the package name by turning around the web address of your organization. So we are in reverse, Borg dot sil dot Cameroon. 
because we have cameroon.sil.org as our web address. And I'm going to put another dot and I'm going to put the name of the fake language that I'm using. So org.sil.cameroon.resembly. The idea behind this package name is that uh, is to group similar apps um, logically as you go down the line. And so if we were creating a bunch of apps, it would be best if they all had the same prefix. So org.sil.cameroon slash resembly, org.sil.cameroon slash bafoots, org.sil.cameroon dot whatever you've got. Uh, and so uh, these are dictionary apps. So it is perfectly okay for us to use sil.org in the link. Uh, that would be different for some other types of apps. Yeah, no, no special characters here either. So this is a romanization of whatever the, whatever the text you're using. This also is internal to the system. The user will not see it. It's between you and the Google admin. This is the name that Google will use for your app, the unique identifier that we use for your app. So next. Everyone that's here is now seeing the font handling um, tab. And so it's asking if we want to use Grandroid or, um, or Crosswalk. So Grandroid is, um, it allows you to uh, solve some font, uh, font display problems. When you export from Flex, your database will be a mix of composed and decomposed characters. It's composed when possible. So if you were to, um, if you were to have an A with a high tone on it, then the A with a high tone would be exported as one character because that exists in Unicode. But if you were to have a schwa with a high tone on it, that exists as two characters because that doesn't exist in Unicode as a composed character. There's a lot going on there. Um, typically a program should deal with it properly so you don't have to worry about whether it's, which way it's encoded. But uh, just in case, because we have some floating diacritics, we're going to turn on Grandroid. All right, next thing it's asking is what fonts do you want to use for each language? And so Deja Vu is a very complete font set, um, but you're probably going to want to use something SIL. Um, and so if you're looking for a nice, if you were doing a printed dictionary, you would probably want to use Keras or Gentium or Dulos. But since this is going to be showing up on a screen, uh, you might want something a little uh, easier to read. So I'm actually going to suggest that we use Andika Africa subset. Okay, so what is, uh, so what is Andika first? Uh, Andika is a literacy font produced by SIL um, that has the simple ball and stick A that, um, that you would write by hand. And it also has a simple G with a hook. Uh, and some of the other characters, those are the main ones you'll see, but some of the other characters have simpler forms. It is designed to look a little bit more like what you actually hand write, so that when you are learning to write, you can copy the letters without having to convert on the fly. Um, when you install a font on Android, it has to load that whole font into memory for it to be able to use it. So SIL fonts are rather large because they have lots of characters. Uh, Andika can be up to five megabytes, I believe, which means that just to have something showing up on your screen in Andika, you are using up five megabytes of your phone's memory. So they have created specifically for mobile devices, these subsets. So this is Andika, but it's just simplified down to the things that they know are used in Africa. So it's just the, uh, the version of the characters that would be expected to be used in Africa. And the Africa subset does cover our Cameroonian orthography quite well. So that's probably the one we're gonna want to use. So I'm gonna choose that for Isembi, or for the language. And I can choose a different font for English. Um, I think we could probably leave it as deja, deja vu. Um, and if you have French, that's fine as well. All right, so you probably want to have at least, you probably want to have uh, two different fonts 
for your vernacular and your analysis languages. Um, but we're going to play around with styling um, and there are other ways that you can distinguish things other than font later. Um, and we'll see that later. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And it asked me for some colors and hunter green is my favorite. So I'm going to go with dark green. Um, go ahead and choose a color scheme that you want. Uh, and it does say you can customize the individual colors later. So this is going to be the colors that you're going to see in your dictionary app. So choose a color, up to you, next. For now, we're just going to be using one of the default icons. So this is actually, when you're in Android, um, this is what the, app, what the app is going to look like. Uh, and so you can just pick one of these. We can play with the, uh, with the icons later. So next. And now it's asking about key stores. So a key store is uh, kind of like a lockbox here on the lockboxes we have on the center. It's a box with a bunch of keys in it. Um, and what these key stores do are they identify uh, when, okay, when you upload an app to Google and then later on you want to update a new app to Google these key stores are what identify that you are the same developer that had put up the original app and that you are not some hacker that is trying to push up a hacked version of the app so that uh, you can steal people's passwords. Um, and so we will need to create a new, a new key store. Um, and this key store you're only going to be using for working on the apps on your machine. We'll come back to key stores right now, but I do need to create a key store. So I'm going to create new key store. And it's asking for a name for it. Um, so key store one is as good as any, but uh, we could give it a name. So we could call it dab key store. I'm calling it DAB key store. It doesn't, it's up to you what you want to name it. Um, or yeah. And it's asking for a password. So it's going to be saving it. And it tells you this in C drive users, your username documents app builder key store. That might be important later. So um, I've given it a name and I'm going to give it a password. Now there are actually two passwords, um, but it is possible that they can be the same. So I'm going to put in a password. Twice. And then I'm going to click next. If you already have a key store, um, it's, uh, it's, it's best to use that one again. Um, that's gonna save you some trouble. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm following this for the people that don't have a key store. Uh, if you already have one, then uh, you're just going to choose it um, instead of creating one just the way that I'm doing here. That's, that's correct. No. Yes, if you have a password manager, <laughs> write this down. Um, as I said, you can use the same, you're going, to you're going to actually create two passwords, but they can be the same. Um, and so go ahead and write them down because as I said, this is an identifying piece of information that could cause you some trouble later um, if you were to publish the app yourself and then lose this password. Uh, you would have to actually, as I understand it, either you'd have to go through some Google arbitration or you would have to, um, uh, you would have to just delete your app and republish it again and get people to find your new app. So you would lose a lot of users in that. You definitely want the same key store um, because that is identifying you as the developer of that app. If it is up to you whether you wanted to, you would want to create a different key for each app. Technically, you could create a different key for each app, but the reality is you're probably not going to be using these anyway to publish your app. You're probably going to be uh, using a service to publish the app 
and so it becomes less important. But for now, you just wanna not forget these passwords. So I'm, we're just gonna go with creating a key score and then we're gonna create, use key one and we're gonna use the, uh, I'm gonna use the same password for this so that I know what it is. So once you click next, it's asking you about your key and uh, you will be configuring um, this key one. So once you have typed in your password for the, uh, or twice there, then you can click next again. And it asks you to identify yourself. Um, and so I can identify this, I could identify this as myself or I could identify it as an organization. So because this is my key, I'm just going to put in my name. So if you're working on a sensitive project, you would, you would probably, you, you might want to publish through an app service like Kalam and they would use their own key store so that they wouldn't see this. Uh, if you are published, if you are, if you choose to self-publish, then yes, I believe um, this is public information. So I think we can move on. So next. Once the key store has been created, as I said, take note of where it's put it. Um, user, documents, app builder, key store. That's where it's put it. You can write that down if you need to. Um, and then you can click close. So it has figured out that I probably want to use the key store I just created. Okay. So as I said, I use the same password twice. So my password is not six dots. Um, and so I am choosing, uh, when I type in the password that unlocks this section, second set, which means that it was able to unlock the box of keys properly. And then when I, and then I choose key one because there's only a key one and I type in the password again. And so I've now unlocked the box. I've gotten my key out and I've unlocked that key itself, which sort of gets a little beyond the metaphor. And then, and then we can move on to the next step. We're done. We're now describing the project. We're almost there. Uh, we're almost, we're, we're getting pretty close here. Uh, and so it's asking for your project information um, because this is going to be a test copy of your project. Uh, so it doesn't matter all that much what the description is. We're going to actually remove this one and we're going to we're going to go through this process again uh, later. So, um, so don't worry too much about typing a long description that you're going to save, but um, I'm going to go with this as a test as my description, and then next. Obviously, if you're creating this for to be the app, then you wouldn't, uh, you can go ahead and put a nice description. But again, it says this is for your own use, not seen by the user. And we have an app profile. So there are a lot of options here, um, but I just, we're just gonna go ahead and build a default as it comes out of the box app. And so we're not, and so the first thing we have to do before we can do that is we need to go to the about tab. Uh, we have to fill in something in the about box to be able to build the app and it needs to be longer than about five characters. <laughs> so, um, so again, this is still a test document. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And we are, um, we are ready now to do a test build of the app. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the build Android app button. Since you only have one app, um, then that's, it's going to run that one. If you had multiple, you would need to click in that app first before you hit the button. And yes, your command prompt will start clicking away. And most of this doesn't matter um, to you. It's things that are being run in the background as it builds an Android app. Um, you will need to be connected to the internet the first time you do this. 
Um, and so if, uh, if we need to do that here in the room, we can. Um, but uh, it will, it's first going to go out to Google and say, is there any, are there any updates to a tool called Gradle that it uses to build, um, uh, to build apps? And it will also check to see if there are any other updates to the Android SDK. And then, uh, and then it will build. So as I said, the first time you do this online, you need to be on the internet. Um, after you've built one offline or online, then it is possible to build one offline um, because it will just use the old settings that you had and the copy that it had downloaded. That app may not be quite as up to date as it could have been, but it still should work. Right. When it is done, it will look like my screen where it says Android APK built successfully. So this first one is the longest one you will ever do. <laughs> After that, it will be much faster uh, because you will not have to do a lot of the downloading and it will have figured out some things. Uh, it put it, and it tells you at the end of the code, it, it put it um, in users, documents, app builder, dictionary apps, APK output. So right now, um, and we'll, we'll, I'll go back over this again, but uh, they have given a path here. See users, user, documents, app builder, dictionary apps, APK output. Your computer doesn't know how to deal with an APK file. So you're gonna need to copy that to your phone um, if you want to do the testing. Uh, but I'm actually going to do it on the screen here. Okay, there we go. So the output is in documents, app builder, dictionary apps, APK output. All right, so if it hasn't completed, then you're not going to see it, but I think some of you are gonna be seeing it. Just to show you what this is going to look like, the sort of thing, or sort of, sort of thing you're going to see on your phone when this works, this is the dictionary app that I have created. I'm using a, an Android emulator out there called Bluestacks um, to allow you to see what I'm seeing on my, or to see the app on my screen. But um, you should, it, what it's created is an app that just has the assembly tab, or just has the language tab. And you can scroll around on the, uh, on the app to move around. And this is an index, so this is like the lexicon view in, um, in Flex. And when you click on an entry, it takes you in and you see the details, things like the, um, uh, the example sentences and the grammatical category, and then you go back again. So there's also the about page that we created with our text. And there is a search function up here in the corner uh, that we haven't finished configuring yet, but uh, I can search for and it is fine it is searching properly uh, to be able to find the code that I'm looking for. And you can send the APK file to your phone. Um, you can plug in your phone directly uh, and copy the file over. You can um, put it on an SD card and put the SD card in your phone and install it. Or you can, um, you can I, I actually use Dropbox and then I download, the, download it. That's actually probably one of the easiest ways to do it. Uh, yeah, you can do Bluetooth, it's slow, um, but you can do that as well. So you can put it in the downloads folder in your phone, on your phone. And then if you have a file browser on your phone, which you don't always, then you can open that from your downloads folder.